Hi friends, I'm Jess and welcome to the Hex Library where I post reading, writing book, and planner related content a couple of times a week. Today is going to be my wrap up for the month of September. Honestly, I was really surprised with how many books I got through in September. I had read 22 books in August and typically when I have a really high month I will have a small month afterwards, but I read 13 books in September. And with the exception of a couple of mid grades, most of them were fairly large books. So I had a really good reading month. So as I said, I read 13 books in the month of September for a total of 3,824 pages. Now, interestingly, I usually do my average rating for the month and I usually put my DNFs in with that average, but I DNF'd five books in September and that really skewed the average. So my average rating, including my DNFs, which if I DNF a book, I consider that a zero. So my average rating for the month of September with DNFs was 2.88 stars out of five. But my average rating without the DNFs was four stars. So I read a lot of really good books, despite the fact that I DNF five books, I read a lot of really good books. As for length, everything that I read in September was novel length. Um, there was nothing that was super short or anything that was considered a weapon length, which is anything over 500 pages. Yumi was really close, but I think it's like 474 pages, so not quite there. Genre wise, I read four horror, two mystery, three paranormal, one romance, two fantasy, and one science fiction. For the target audience age range, I read five mid-grade, two YA, and six for an adult audience. So those are our stats for the month. We are going to hop into the books that I read for the month. We start with our DNFs and then any rereads that I had and then my books that I read lowest to highest rated. I did not have any rereads this month, but as I said, I did have five DNFs, so let's start there. The first of which was Halloween Party by Agatha Christie. I read about 15% of this and I had zero idea what was happening. I really struggle with um, writing from that time period or of that style. It's very wordy to me and I don't really understand much of what's going on, so I try to read some Agatha Christie sometimes and that one just was not the one for me, so I DNF'd at 15%. The next that I DNF'd was actually my pick for my TBR jar for the month and that is The Sound of Stars by Alicia Dow. I read it through I think the first chapter of The Aliens Point of View before I decided to DNF this. I had read it for a try chapter in um, I think earlier last year and had liked it and so I had high hopes to like this book. A because I like Alicia Dow. I think she is from what I can tell from her outward persona a fantastic human. However, I really struggled with the alien's point of view. Like, I understand the point is that he's an alien and he's not going to sound like us, but I had a really hard time reading through his chapters. And because of that, I knew that I was going to rate this book poorly. And because I feel like Alicia and this book deserve a better rating than that, I didn't want to read it and then rate it lowly. That is also the case with our next two books, the first of which is Bitter Orange Tree, which I believe is by Joka Alharthi. This was the book club pick for my local bookstores book club. We've been reading books that have been translated through this year. Um, this one had a similar problem to a book that I read last year where the way that it's written, it jumps around in time a lot. Um, like you'll start a paragraph out with, um, something that's happening right now and then they'll say and 20 years from now that would find to be true but when I was two XYZ happened so like it'll go past present future all in the same paragraph and for me I really struggle reading books like that I have no clue what's going on beyond each paragraph like I can read the paragraph and be like that's a great paragraph but when it comes down to putting that all together in a story I have zero fucking clue what's happening I read about 10% of that and was like I I can't my brain does not function in that direction, so I DNF'd that. I then DNF'd Wild Seed by Octavia E. Butler. Um, again, with Mrs. Butler, as I tend to do, I try to read her books, I end up DNFing them um, because she's too smart for me. I feel like a moron. I have no clue what's happening. Um, I have a similar problem with a lot of other authors who I feel like write things that win like these literary awards. And I just don't get it. Like, I don't, it's not that I don't get why they're winning awards. I just don't get it like I don't <laughs> I don't want to say I'm too stupid to understand but I feel like in some ways I'm probably too stupid to understand 
like the thing is happening and I just don't get it. Um, I did like what I read but I just was very lost as far as like the context of the plot and was just not interested in finishing the story. And the last book that I DNF'd for the month is On the Savage Side by Tiffany McDaniel um, but essentially this book follows a pair of sisters named Arcade and Daffodil which are the worst names in history. So one of the main reasons why I wanted to read this book is because it is set in the town that I live in. It is dedicated to the women that they call the Chillicothe Six, which were six women around 2013-2014 who went missing and some of them were found murdered and some were not found there um, just for like a little bit of a history lesson. Uh, one of the women was murdered fairly close to my house actually and her killer has since been caught and arrested and is in prison. There were three women that they found that they have not found um, who was involved in their death and then there are two women who have never been found. Um, some people like to sensationalize it and say that there was like a serial killer. I don't know enough to know if that's an accurate portrayal of what actually happened. Some people say that one of the girls' death was a suicide. Some say that it was a murder. Some say the other girls were murdered. Some say they just overdosed and were like because people didn't want people to find their body in their possession and know that they were all doing drugs, that they just hid the bodies. There's a lot of things that kind of went into the story. So there are a couple of documentaries out there if you want to know more. I think one's just called um, the, I think one is called The Disappeared Women or The Missing Women, but they're set in Chillicothe, Ohio. So it's a story. Like it's, a, it's a thing that's out there. It's, it's a real life thing. So this book was inspired by that and the opioid epidemic of the heroin problems that we have in these very small Appalachia towns like mine and you know it's not something that is insular and just at my location it's happening all over um, Rust Belt cities and in Appalachia it is a huge problem in our area and so this follows two sisters who grew up in a household um, where their mother was a heroin addict and they live with their mother and their aunt who I believe was also a heroin addict and grow they grow up in their heroin addicts imagine that and uh, this book was very dark I think I made it about 25% through and I I couldn't handle the content of the book anymore. Um, that's the reason why I'm putting it down because it's not, um, I was interested in reading it because I knew that it was going to be a little dark and I knew that it was going to um, pertain to my area, which it really doesn't. It doesn't portray where I live very accurately. It's very sensationalized. It's very um, like, because most of it is set in like the 80s and the early 2000s and even then it's not very accurate to the town that I live in. Um, I don't think the lady that wrote this book has really ever been here so you know. Um, she lives in Ohio. The main the author of the book lives in Ohio but she clearly hasn't spent much time here because she doesn't know like where a river is and things like that but that's outside of the point. But yeah it was extremely dark and I bounced. Did the dedication make me cry? Yes. I've never had a uh, dedication to a book make me cry before, um, but this one definitely did. Again, I was traumatized by just the dedication, and I hope that it traumatized you as well. Uh, this book, I'm sure if you can handle the dark content and nature of this book that you would probably enjoy it, but not for me. Speaking of trauma, let's get to our lowest rated book of the month, which was out of 2.5 out of 5 stars, Haru Zombie Dog Hero by Ellen O. Um, this book read much more like a short story than a complete novel and it was excruciatingly traumatic. I've read from Ellen O in the past. I have loved her works in the past. This one really did not land for me at all. So it's supposed to be based off of Haru which is a dog who turns into a zombie and becomes like the town hero which is cool but that's not really what happens um but it really is like there's this crazy racist lady who owns these people's building and she slaps their son and the dog tries to protect the kid and bites the lady and then gets sent to a pound which then they actually turn him into a zombie but like no one addresses the fact that this woman literally hit a child across the face like left a mark and the police are like well the dog's got to go to the pound but no one's gonna be like mm, that lady just put her hands on my child no one's gonna talk about that okay um yeah i found this book to be very traumatizing and just not not good it didn't have a good ending um there really was no conclusion it was just like the family was on the run and that was it and it was 
it was it was not a good book it was not a good book and I don't think it was a complete book it needed a huge read over or like it needs some it needed some major editing I did have this as an arc so hopefully the finished product is a lot better than what I read but I did not like it and speaking of authors that I've read from before that I've loved and then did not enjoy this month at also 2.5 out of 5 stars is Exiles by Jane Harper. This is the fifth Jane Harper that I've read and the first one that I've genuinely not had a good time reading. This is the third book in the Aaron Falk series and typically I have liked Aaron Falk's books but this one just didn't do it for me. I think part of it is because Aaron's books are basically like we only see him when he's on vacation and he's never in the same place twice. So it's just like him thrown into this world of people that he knows but we don't know who they are but it's like kind of implied that we're supposed to. Um, and so you're just like getting all these characters thrown at you and you have no idea who any of them are and we're supposed to be figuring things out. And also how did he solve this murder? Because there was literally no new evidence in this murder. It was a crime that had happened like a decade ago. There was no new evidence in the murder but somehow he just knew what had happened and he was able to magically solve it. Like he's not even a police detective. Like he does um, forensic accounting. Like he doesn't, he's not even like, I don't know. It's just the weirdest thing ever. And like this again had that weird timeline thing where they would be in present day and in present day they would be remembering a thing that happened two years ago and in that scene of them of two years ago they were remembering a thing that happened a decade ago. I don't need that. But mostly it was just the fact that there was no way for us as the reader to figure out what had happened in the murder at all. Like we were told who the killer, like you know the fun part of a murder mystery is to like get the clues along the way and be able to piece it together but we got the clues along the way but literally no one put, could put it together except for Aaron Falk. He was the only one that was like well let me tell you about this thing that happened that no one else has ever figured out and like how. Also the second half of this became a romance. I don't know it was the weirdest thing ever. Next at a 3.25 out of 5 stars we have Meddling Kids by Edgar Cantaro and this was an interesting read. The beginning, fantastic. The end, so good. The middle, very soggy. She was a soggy middle. Despite the fact that this looks like a mid-grade, it is an adult horror. It is spooky. It is kind of Scooby-Doo adjacent. The biggest problem for me in this book was that there was a romance between two of the characters and one of them has like basically been in the love with the other for like their entire lives and the other character is like, well, I've never really had those feelings for you but I guess if like we pretend to be a couple uh, maybe one day I'll feel it or something. Like that was legitimately the romance that was in this and I okay sure why not. Uh, but I did like the villain arc. I liked um, like the mystery behind it. It was like a really well thought out mystery. I feel like the clues and everything were fun to put together and try to figure out and I really liked the way that the story worked. There was just some things that just did not work for me. Also 3.25 out of 5 stars is Stone Cold Heart by Kaz Freer. Uh, this is the second book in the series and I think the series just goes by the name of the main character Kat, Kat Kinsella. Um, I own the third book in this and I don't think I'm gonna read it. I know a 3.25 is not a bad rating but I gave the first book a 3 as well and I have a problem with the main character's romantic arc and I know it doesn't get any better in the third book because I've read some reviews and I'm just not here for that drama. So I don't think I'm going to be picking up any more of these. They're fine. Um, they do really heavily center more around like the main character's family life and her romantic life than about the mystery itself. But they're fine. Creepover book number 20. Will you be my friend? Uh, this is part of the Creepover series. They're a creepy sleepover series. This one follows a girl who finds someone who looks just like her and wants to be her friend and it was fine. Four stars. It was a good one. I liked it. It was a three creepy and I gave it a four so I mean that's a bonus right? At four stars A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon by Sarah Holly. This was just like your very good, very spicy, uh, YA romance with a little bit of mm, spicy YA romance? No, Jessica. A very good, very spicy adult romance. <laughs> that makes more sense. Um, that is like in a contemporary setting but has witches in it. And obviously demons because we're dating a demon. There's nothing really 
inherently original about the story. The end is so incredibly cheesy, but honestly, if you like these stories, if you like the X Hex and Not the Witch You Wed, I think this will be one that you'll like as well. Um, they're all kind of very much in that same vein of romances that have like magical creatures but are set in modern world and it really is more about the ro romance and the spice than about anything else. Um, I will say the mothers of both our main character and one of our side characters are so hard to read because they are terrible women in this book um, but I think they get their just desserts and I enjoyed that. I did like our characters. I liked our main character. I liked the, our love interest. I loved the best friend characters. Um, the characters for this were really good. The romance was really good. Nothing like over the top blew me away, but a fantastic read. I then have Small Spaces by Katherine Arden. This was a 4.25 out of 5 stars. This is a mid grade. It is the first in a series. I really enjoyed this. I don't think it's too scary for kids in the target age range, which sometimes, like with Kate Alice Marshall's 13s, I feel like maybe it's a bit too scary for kids in that age range. But this one, I think this one will land good for mid grade readers. Um, I do feel like the end left a little bit to be desired. It wasn't like that great of like a dark night moment. It was just kind of like it happened but as this is part of a series and because I know um, that this villain does come back in the future that I'm okay with that kind of an ending. It just wasn't like the best ending ever but and, you know if I was a mid-grade reader instead of a 36 year old woman I might have enjoyed it better. However I thought this was a solid mid-grade spooky and um one you should pick up if you are into that sort of thing. I then read the oldest book on my physical TBR and that is The Novice by Tara Mathrew. This has been on my shelf since 2017. I gave this a 4.25 out of 5 stars. It was a good time. It was fantastic. I really like the magic system. I like the characters. I like the story. Um, it did again have like a little bit of a soggy middle but I mean obviously not too bad or I wouldn't have rated it as highly as I did. Uh, am I sad that I have let these languish on my shelves for the long ass time? Yes, yes I am. Am I happy that I finally picked it up? Yes. Did I pick this up because Pick Pongathon was like read read a, what did Pick Pongathon tell me? To read a book I was not looking forward to and I was like I don't own books I'm not looking forward to because I call the shelves quite often as those of you who have been here know. Um, but as this was the oldest book on the physical TBR it felt, felt like the right thing to read for that prompt. Um, I really like our main character Fletcher. I think he was a fun person to read from his point of view. Um, I love where the story ended off at. The uh, cliffhanger ending we got. Mm, girl, I am very excited to get to the second book. It's probably not going to happen in October, but hopefully in November. At a 4.5 out of 5 stars, we have The Fullcroft Ghost by Darcy Coates. Uh, if you've been here this year, you know I have been going through the Darcy Coates backlist for sure. Uh, this was one of my favorites. I do really like the haunted house stories that Darcy Coates does and I think this one definitely had like the haunted house vibe but also a little bit of something extra that really worked for me. Uh, this one is like two kids who go to stay at their grandparents house that they've never met before and it is spooky. I had the absolute best time reading this. If you are into Darcy Coates, if you're into spooky haunted house stories, if you're into weird generational spooky stories then you know pick this one up. At a 4.5 out of 5 stars and a completely different kind of story I read at Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This was a time. So this is set after basically the end of the world. This is 20 years after an influenza pandemic killed 90% of the population of the world. I bought this in December 2019 been holding off on reading it for reasons. And I really liked this story. I liked the look at both what was happening at the beginning of the pandemic and like what was happening with people as far as like how they were adapting and how they were coping with that and then also the viewpoint of 20 years later and where these people had ended up um, and that these people, our main characters, were really working to um, keep art and music and things like that alive in a world where you know other things were considered more important and more vital for survival. Some of the like where people ended up at was absolutely insanity. Um, yeah like this book gave me chills. It gave me I mean all of the feels. All of the feels. There is like a culty vibe to part of this. There is like a prophet who um, is like kind of turning his people against others and like once you figure out who the prophet is it will blow your mind. It was a weird time. 
So I really enjoyed this. I do highly recommend it if you can handle the content. Um, it was a really good book. And my last three books were all five stars, starting with book nine of the Sarah Normal series, Playing With Fire. This was my favorite of the series because mm, I've finished the series since then. Um, yeah, this was my favorite of the series. It was fantastic. This one involves our friend Sarah, uh, who can see ghosts, and she finally tells her best friend Lily that she can see ghosts, and shit goes down. Uh, it was a good time. I love these mid-grades. They're, they're fun. They're cute. Like, some of them are better than others, obviously, but this one was a good one. Speaking of cute mid-grades, The Odds by Lindsay Puckett. Did I force Lindsay to sign this the other day when I seen her? Yes, I did. I threw it at her and I said, here, sign this. So it is now signed. I'm a good friend. Um, this book follows Begonia who lives in a retirement home for old people and basically everybody there is odd and Begonia is odd. But if she doesn't get her actual oddity by the time her birthday comes around then she's gonna have her memories wiped and she's gonna be put in with like normal people instead of in with all of her weird grandparents and she wants to be with her odd grandparents. So this book follows Begonia and Bass who she doesn't like but you know he's our other main character um trying to save her retirement home while both of them are also trying to get their oddities so that they can stay within their families and around the people that they love and this book is there's the plot twist y'all and the plot twist threw me for a loop like you don't expect to get a loop like that in a mid-grade book but phew, she hit and she hit hard and I loved it it was a fantastic time I had a great time reading this book obviously because five stars and then the last book was also the final book that I read of the month and that is Yumi and the Nightmare Painter by Brandon Sanderson technically this and the odds I haven't hauled on the channel yet um, I bought them in October, but since I own them, I might as well hold them up for you, especially because, like, you know, she gorgeous. I haven't read Trust yet, and I've read, um, A Frugal Wizard's Handbook for Surviving Medieval England guidebook. I don't remember which. I get it confused every time. Um, but I didn't love that one enough to pay the money for the pretty edition, but this one I loved enough to buy the pretty edition. Okay. Okay. Plus the regular edition of this book is just not it. This is gorgeous, but the regular edition is not the prettiest. Um, but this follows Yumi and the Nightmare Painter for obvious reasons. Um, and it was a fantastic time. This one specifically, Sanderson says is like his romance and he wrote this for his wife. And I don't know that I think that the romance, the romance in this was fantastic, but I still think that this is more world building and like universe shifting than just a romance. I can see why this is like, he says this is the most romantic book he's ever written, um, but it's still not super romance forward. Um, obviously, because I read romances, so I would know. I am obviously the best judge of that, of all people. Surely. This book does have illustrations in it. And it honestly was just a fantastic read. I read it in one day. Like I read the whole thing in a day. I had the absolute best time. It was a beautiful story. Much like Darcy Coates, I have been reading through all of the Sanderson backlist. Um, this obviously is not technically backlist, um, but I had to pause my backlist reading to read some of the newer books. So I have read many a Sanderson this year and um, this is probably my second favorite because Alondris is still my favorite, but this one was right up there with Elantris. So Elantris is right there. She sits face front. Elantris is probably going to lose her face front privileges once this hits the shelves though. Let's be honest because she's gorgeous. So this is the very precarious stack of books that I read in the month of September. Indian Act also. Um, like I said, way more than I was expecting. As always, I will have linked in the description box below my full reviews on Goodreads if you want to know any more of my full thoughts about these books. And if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, that's what the comments are for, where you can hit me up and we can talk about these books, especially if you loved them or if you hated them. Uh, I like to have conversations about books. It's a fun time. It's why we're here. If you made it this far in the video, leave me a rainbow emoji in the comments down below, especially if you're not feeling chatty because, I mean way to show you're here without having to like write words. It's great. That is all I have for today. I will see you guys next time. Bye!